Hello and welcome to lesson three, sexual reproduction in plants. These are the spec points we're going to cover in this session. And we'd like you to feel confident that you can recall the structure of a seed, how they're dispersed, describe and explain the process of germination and conditions required for it to occur, and explain how food reserves are mobilized and used by the embryo, explaining the role of gibberellin in seed germination. Please pause the video and complete activity one. So the answers, during seed development, what happens to the diploid zygote? So the diploid zygote divides by mitosis to form the diploid embryo, consisting of the plumule, which is the baby shoot, the radical, which is the baby root, and one or two cotyledons, which are basically seed leaves. During seed development, what happens to the triploid endosperm? So the triploid endosperm divides by mitosis to form the endosperm tissue, which is an important food storage tissue and cereal grains, for example, wheat. What do the following flower structures develop into um, following fertilization? So just check your notes and see if you've got similar answers. The role of fruit in plant reproduction. So we'll come on to that in a minute. And an essay question, describe the process of pollination, double fertilization and seed development in flowering plants. So the role of fruit in reproduction in plants is basically to help with a couple of things. Um, firstly, seed dispersal. So if, for example, you have a little animal that eats the fruit, it will also eat the seeds and then the animal will move and defecate and the seeds will have a different area to start germinating. Um, it also provides nutrition. So, for example, if the fruit just falls on the floor and um, isn't eaten by anything, then the energy within the fruit will be broken down and incorporated into the soil. So for your essay question, it's a nine marker. So remember that for this, you need to identify the three subtitles or the three sections of your essay. So here, for example, we've got the first one, second one, and the third one. And then pay close attention to the underlined key terms or phrases and just check that they're in your notes. And if not, just to add them in. Please pause the video and complete activity two. So this is just a quick review of mono versus dicot. So monocots and dicots are both plants that reproduce sexually um, by having flowers and they've got a few differences between them. So for example, mono means one, um, it's talking about cotyledons. So in monocots, um, these in their seeds have one cotyledon, which is basically one seed leaf. Whereas dicots, di means two, it's talking about the cotyledon, cotyledons. <laughs> so it has two little seed leaves within seed. Another couple of things that you'll notice, um, so monocots generally are things like grasses because they have parallel veins, whereas dicots um, have veins that run in branches. There's a couple of differences between the pollen grain structure. So in monocots, pollen grains have one pore or furrow, whereas in dicots, they have three pores or furrows. They also have dis different arrangements in their vascular bundles. The structure of seeds in monocots versus dicots. So you should be able to um, label a seed and identify some of the key features. So a few things just to point out here, you need to be able to identify the helium on seeds. So here it is the part where it was originally attached to the fruit. The seed down here you'll notice is a dicot because we've got two leaves that are emerging from that seed. And if we just have a look up here at the maize seeds, so again, take a closer look at some of the structures on here and see if you can add them into your notes. So a question that you often get asked is, is maize rain a fruit or a seed? So maybe just pause the video and have a think about how you might categorize it. So maize is actually categorized as a fruit, and this is because the ovary wall has fused with the tester. So therefore the outer layer is technically a fruit. 
Please pause the video and complete activity three. So the first question on here is, what are the conditions needed for a seed to come out of a period of dormancy and to germinate? And there are a few things that are required here. The first one is water. The second one is oxygen. And the third one is heat. So what does initial rapid water absorption by the seed lead to? Well, this basically starts the mobilization of food reserves within the seed. It also ruptures the tester which means that the plumule, so the growing part of the shoot, is able to come out of that seed coat. Which is the radical and which is the plumule? So think R for root, R for radical. So the radical in this diagram here is the root and the plumule is the part that will become the stem. What must happen to the reserves of food in the seed in order to be transported to the plumule? So these basically need to be broken down and they'll be broken down into alpha glucose. You'll recognize that here. So the food reserves in this seed, because this is a germinating broad bean seed, is maltose. And the enzyme involved in hydrolyzing this food store would be maltase. And again, it's because maltose is a disaccharide, as you should remember from last year. And therefore, the enzyme maltase will break that glycosidic bond. Why is the plumule bent over shaped like a hook as it's pushed through the soil? So you'll notice here we've got this kind of hook like structure and that's basically to protect the baby leaves so that as soon as that little shoot is above ground and in the presence of sun, it can photosynthesize. Um, and the new sources of food, as we were just saying, is basically photosynthesis. So as soon as that plant can photosynthesize, it will. For the next part, I'd like you to annotate your diagram as we run through this description. So food reserves and seeds are insoluble in water and cannot be used or transported to the growing seedling. So therefore they must be broken down into smaller, simple, soluble units like glucose. Water initially is taken up rapidly by the seed The embryo is then going to secrete gibberellic acid. And now this is a plant growth regulator, which is going to diffuse through the endosperm to the alluron layer. This is going to cause genes in the cells of the alluron layer to switch on. And following this, they're going to transcribe and translate proteases. So here we can see the gibberellic acid is switching on genes that are going to synthesize proteases. The proteases are going to hydrolyze the protein in the alluron layer into amino acids. So here you can see the amino acids have been the product of protein digestion. The amino acids um, will then synthesize or be used to synthesize amylase enzyme. And the amylase will move into the inner layer, the endosperm of that seed. The amylases are going to then break down starch into its monomers, so into alpha glucose. And the alpha glucose is going to diffuse into the growing embryo and it's going to be used in respiration and it's going to help release or synthesize ATP, things like biosynthesis and cell division. Please go back to your diagram and have a go at the question underneath, which is describe how food reserves are mobilized during germination. Use your diagram to help you write an answer. So the answer for this is on here. Maybe just pause the video and check and see if you can add anything to your description. So I'd like you to pause the video and decide what's happening here. So basically here we've got an agar plate with starch that's impregnating the agar and germinating seeds have been put on top of the agar plate and left for a period of time. And after a period of time, iodine solution has been added to that agar plate. 
Now, iodine solution, as you know from GCSE, turns from an orange color to a dark blue color in the presence of starch. So what we can see here is that there are areas around those germinating seeds that have no starch present. So if we think back to our mobilization of food reserves within a seed, we can think about the enzymes that are being synthesized within that seed and how this might affect the digestion of starch in the agar plate. So probably we've had some of that amylase enzyme diffuse out of those germinating seeds and into that starch agar and they've started to break down the starch agar and you can see here by these areas that's exactly what's happened. Please pause the video and complete activity four. There's a Kahoot in your activity, so please have a go at that. And just a quick review of the learning objectives.